Hi, and welcome to the End Times Guy podcast. My name is Lee. Thrilled to have you along with me. It's a gorgeous Thursday morning. The skies are blue, and my day is easy. I'm really happy about that. Uh, you know, I want to share with you that honestly, what I'm doing here is playing with fire. And anyone who steps forward into any avenue of ministry is playing with fire. Absolutely. I tried for many, many years to do things for God, and it took God many, many years to teach me that I could do nothing at all. I have no ability. I am nobody. I have nothing to offer. No one does. No one on the earth does things for God. We're just humans. We're weak. We're fragile. We get confused. We stumble in many ways. We are not fit to minister the word of God. None of us is. We have to submit ourselves to God and allow God himself to perform that ministry. He's the only one fit, the only one able to perform that ministry. So if your desire is to minister effectively, to bring glory to God, then it's simple. Stop trying. Just surrender. Just accept the fact that you can't. None of us earns anything before God. None of us will ever do things to bring God glory. None of us will ever go to God saying, look what I've done for you. It is not possible. We will never do anything for God. The only true ministry that we can do is to simply deny ourselves and allow God to do through us, the things that God wants to do. Any endeavor to minister without God, man, it's playing with fire. It's dangerous. Um, God gets very upset with those who take a word and run with it that God never spoke. He is furious with the prophets. Read Jeremiah 23 and 25. God is absolutely furious with the prophet who runs with a message that God never gave him to give. And it is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I think about Job, who (laughs) he was really being hammered by his quote unquote friends and even by his own wife to, you know, curse God and die. And In my way of thinking, Job remained faithful. Job kept his faith. Job kept his trust in God. And I thought Job was doing great. I was really impressed with Job. And then God shows up. And man, it was kind of terrifying. I was caught off guard when God says to Job, Okay, you with your great wisdom, come on, put on your coat. Come out here and show me how I laid the foundations of the earth. Show me how I made Leviathan. You know, (laughs) who are we to think that we know the mind of God? Any ministry that proceeds from our mind, our understanding, or our imagination is dangerous. It's absolutely dangerous. Only the ministry that proceeds from the Holy Spirit is safe. To give. And that's why I am utterly thankful to God for my weakness and His making me aware of my weakness. That I, having Asperger's, I'm not a strong communicator. I'm not a strong orator. I'm not a persuasive person. There is no strength in me to lead anyone. And because of having Asperger's, I, in fact, don't want to lead anyone. I would rather, I'm, I'm happiest when I'm all alone, away from people. I find being around people and communicating with people very stressful. My daughter was diagnosed with Asperger's as well. I don't want to be misleading. She was formally diagnosed. I was self-diagnosed. Um, but I have a, a much more severe case than her. When I take the online tests, it's right off the charts, almost to the point where it could be something even more pronounced than Asperger's. It's that far up at the high end of things. 
And I'm thankful to God for that weakness, which renders me absolutely useless. Can you imagine the peace that I have knowing that if there's any ministry going on, it is in fact God because I can't do it. There was a a minister named Milton Green in the 1980s who, and check him out on sermonindex.net, his uh, sermons will give you good, solid food. Um, Man, a man of God who went and played around with drugs to the point where at the age of 36, his brain was like a squash and his thoughts were not cohesive. The only time he could talk is when he was sharing the gospel because the Holy Spirit is the one who shares the gospel. If we understand anything about the gospel, it has to be the Holy Spirit. When we share the gospel, it's not the gospel anymore. So check out Milton Green. He could not talk at all. He couldn't put a sentence together with his own strength. That's where his mind was. But when the Holy Spirit stepped in, all of a sudden, he was speaking clearly. And then later on, he began to minister from the pulpit. And the same thing, the Holy Spirit put everything together. And when you listen to him, you think you're listening to a Harvard PhD black belt ninja preacher. But it's not. It's not. It's the Holy Spirit. Because, man, when the Holy Spirit ministers, it's powerful. But when man ministers, we're in a bit of a fix right now in the Western world because we have people who are gifted orators, who are uh, persuasive, who are able to speak powerfully. And what they do is they move our emotions. And this is a false spirit. And we, we feel that we've heard some strong words and we've had an emotional experience. And that's our time with God. But this happens over and over, week after week, and the people don't change. They remain where they are five years and ten years later. And that is the, that's the true fruit of the Spirit of God. If it is God working, if it is God ministering, lives get changed. I had a friend who went to all these charismania meetings where they barked and they howled and they shook and they had little fits and everything else. And he came back and told me how wonderful it all was and how incredible. But I noticed that every single time he remained trapped in the same sins. His life wasn't changed by those experiences, and it made me skeptical. Later on, I would learn that this is identical to a Middle Eastern experience called the Kundalini Blessing, where the the same fruits manifest. These uh, uh, shaking fits and ecstasy and all kinds of erratic behavior and this um, seeming uh, bliss they receive from it, but at the end of the day, Their lives are not transformed. They are not changed. They remain who they are. Man, I am thankful that we have a God in heaven. And it is his power that transforms us. We cannot minister to one another. And we can't change one another. I have no power to change you. You have no power to change me. We're all in this together. We're we're the ones stranded in the ocean. God is the one with the lifeboat. Now, when the Holy Spirit ministers, our lives are transformed. As it says in Philippians chapter 2, it is the power of God at work within us, both to will and to do that which is good. So we in our own strength can do nothing good. We can't minister. We can't strengthen the body. We can't even preach the gospel. All we can do is surrender ourselves so that the Holy Spirit has the room to do those things in us. And that's how ministry is done. And you know what? If in your heart you're burdened, I want to minister. I want to be used by God. Man, I 
I can tell you, <laughs> I burned in my heart for more than a decade to the point of sorrow and despair, crying out to God, give me children lest I die. Because I wanted to bear fruit for God, but I couldn't. And it took God that long to show me. You can't. You will never, ever bear fruit for me. You are unable. You will never be able to. No matter how badly you want, no matter how hard you try, your best schemes, your best plans, your best efforts will never result in fruit. You are utterly incapable and you will never, ever do anything for me. It's a humbling thing. It's a very humbling thing to think that there is nothing I will ever do. There is nothing good that dwells within me. There is nothing I have to offer anyone. But when I came to that realization, then God was able to do what only God can do. Okay, now that you're willing to sit down and be quiet, now see what I can do. All true ministry proceeds from God. We will never be anything but a vessel. And I want all of us to always be like Daniel. Daniel never stood up and took the glory for himself. He always pointed towards God. So when you see true fruit, I'm not talking about emotional experiences and teary moments. I'm talking about true fruit, lives being changed. You have to understand that that is God. That is the power of God moving. And we can get excited about that. Now, I want to finish by telling you something the Lord revealed to me this morning. In terms of our daily bread, our daily communion with God. You know, I think most people probably have a daily reading time in the word of God. I would hope so. It's insane to try and have a relationship with God and not at least show him the honor of, of reverencing his word and reading his word. But when you take up the Bible to read it, that is taking a slice of bread in your hand. But if all you do is read the book and close it and now you're done and you go away, you just set the, the slice of bread down and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> you were never fed. We can't just take up the word, read it, set it down there. All done. You have to eat it. And you eat it by meditating on it. I am so blessed and thankful that God has put me in this position where every morning I have time to meditate on the things that I've read, digest the word of God, internalize it. You see, the word of God has the power to perform its work within us. And what is that work? To conform us to the image of Christ. We want the word to perform its work. We want to be washed in the pure water of the word. And as we meditate, as we dwell, we're sowing the seed of truth in our lives. So don't just read a few verses or, you know, one of the worst things to do is to dutifully read one chapter a day. You don't, uh, you know, sometimes you can read two verses and that will fill you with more than a day's worth of meditation. Don't blindly just read a chapter a day. Read what you need. L learn to hear from the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you'll read a whole book. In a sitting, I'll never forget reading the book of Hebrews in a sitting and being overwhelmed with the deity of Jesus Christ. Just overwhelmed by it. Don't just dutifully and blindly read a chapter a day. Read what you need. Read, you know, what you need to meditate on for the day and then eat the bread. Go ahead and spend some time really pondering. All that the word of God is saying to you, you'll be surprised what the Holy Spirit will illuminate in just a couple of verses. There's an ocean of wisdom underneath every verse and the Holy Spirit is there 
to say, hey, let's take a deeper look. Let's go deeper into this. And the Holy Spirit will cause growth inside of you. I hope this encourages you and strengthens you and reassures you that the burden isn't on you to do ministry. Don't feel like I'm weak. I can't do it. I, I have no strength. Don't worry. That's the best place to be in, in the understanding that you have no strength. The Holy Spirit can be strong. Paul lamented. <laughs> I prayed three times, Lord, take this thorn from my flesh. And the Lord said, my strength is perfected in your weakness, Paul. Be weak, Paul, because I'll be strong. And the Lord has made me weak, and I'm aware of my weakness, and therefore God can be strong. I revel in my weakness. I am thankful for my weakness, an ever-present reminder that I am an unfit tool. I am an undeserving dog. There is nothing good that abides within me. I'm no minister at all. And if I try and minister through my own wisdom and understanding and strength, I'm a fraud, a hypocrite, and a danger to you. It has to be the Holy Spirit or I'm playing with fire. And so are you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.